Drive. Tonight, several developing stories. The dramatic escape. Authorities just moments ago on 13-year-old Jamie Kloss, who escaped her captor 88 days after her parents were killed and she was kidnapped. Tonight, authorities say the suspect was trying to hunt her down after he realized she had escaped. Also breaking tonight, the images coming in now, the school shooting, a man pulling a gun, students locked in their classrooms. The government shut down tonight just hours from becoming the longest ever. Hundreds of thousands of workers receiving their paychecks with zeros on them. One couple who called their mortgage lender, and you'll hear what the answer was. The major winter storm from Denver all the way east to Philadelphia. Several states getting hit. This plane skidding off the runway just a short time ago. And the key factor tonight that will determine if New York City gets hit. The rookie officer seen getting her badge just weeks ago, shot and killed on the job. The patient in a vegetative state for years who suddenly gave birth. Authorities demanding DNA from workers. Well, tonight, for the first time, you will hear the 911 calls. The stunned workers saying a patient just delivered a baby. The highway emergency, a driver swerving across several lanes tonight. We've now learned what caused this. And news coming in tonight on the flu, where they are most concerned now, the new and alarming numbers. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here at a very busy Friday night, and we begin with new reporting tonight on the stunning escape. 13-year-old Jamie Kloss, who was home when her parents were murdered, authorities say she was then kidnapped. Tonight, 88 days later, news on her dramatic getaway. Investigators say she escaped a home in a neighboring county 70 miles away. She was in shoes, too large for her feet. She approached a woman walking her dog and said, I'm Jamie, I need help. I don't know where I am. Tonight, this 21-year-old suspect is now in custody. The sheriff says he was on the hunt for Jamie when he realized she had escaped, and that's when they caught him. And this image just in tonight of Jamie reunited with her aunt. ABC's Alex Perez with what authorities just revealed. Tonight, a stunning tale of survival. 88 days after she vanished, following the brutal murder of her parents, 13-year-old Jamie Kloss found alive some 70 miles from home, first spotted by Jean Nutter, who was walking her dog. I saw a young woman approach me. She was crying and said, I need help. I don't know where I am. I'm lost. Please help me. And she said, I'm Jamie. And then I am this close to her, so I knew it was Jamie. Jamie looking disheveled, thin, with no coat. What's her demeanor like? You knew something was wrong. Right. And I, I knew she was scared, and I knew she had, wherever she came from, she left quickly because she didn't have... She had somebody else's shoes on that were too big for her. Nutter quickly realizing who she was and rushing to a neighbor's house to call 911. To see her walk into my kitchen, it was like seeing a ghost for real. It was, it was, I mean, it took my breath away, you know. And I'm still, it's kind of hard for me to wrap my mind around it. Well, I kept telling Jamie, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. I'm getting you to a safe place. Police racing to that home where Kloss described her kidnapper and his car. Minutes later, officers tracking a car that fits that description and taking this man, Jake Patterson, into custody, an unemployed 21-year-old with no criminal record. We do believe Jamie was the only target. Investigators think Patterson first shot Jamie's parents at their home in the middle of the night last October, then kidnapped Jamie. With regard to the suspect taking great efforts to minimize his forensic footprint at the crime scene, like shaving his head not to leave hair behind. Police say Jamie made her escape from Patterson's home. He, police believe, was out looking for her when he was caught. Word quickly reaching her family. The sheriff come to my house and he was smiling and he had the best news ever. We cried and cried. Jamie today evaluated at a hospital and in good condition. Just gonna tell her how much I love her and missed her and give her the biggest hug ever. For three months, this community held out hope, hundreds searching for her. Tonight, Jamie finally reunited with her family. She found a way to get out of where she was and came looking for somebody. And it's really just, I just happened to be there in the right place at the right time. Wow, we love seeing that photo late today, the reunion with the family that never gave up hope. And Alex joins us now outside the Sheriff's Department tonight. Alex, I know one of the central questions tonight is how is this suspect, how he could be connected in any way to this family? 
Well, David, investigators are still trying to figure that out. They do know the suspect briefly worked at a plant where Jamie's parents worked a few years ago. He's being held on pending murder and kidnapping charges. David? Alex Perez leading us off on a Friday night. Alex, thank you. We are also following another story developing just before we came on the air tonight. Images coming in from a school shooting a middle school. Authorities say gunfire erupting during a custody dispute. The suspect allegedly pulling his gun as officers were trying to escort him from the school. There was a lockdown, children terrified in classrooms. Here's ABC's Will Carr with the images coming in tonight. Tonight, terror ripping through a middle school in Eugene, Oregon. We got a report of a dispute here at the school. Officers arrived and we're dealing with a subject. Cascade Middle School students on lockdown for hours after authorities say a custody dispute led to a man pulling a gun while he was being escorted by police out of the school. The suspect uh, is has been shot. With frantic parents lined up outside. Scary first real thing but yeah I'm still nervous even though my daughter's okay it's just really scary students eventually allowed to leave through the back of the school the suspect's body covered in a yellow tarp in the front David thankfully no students or faculty members were hurt as the officer involved shooting is now under investigation David will car tonight will thank you of course the other major story tonight the government shutdown 800,000 American workers not getting paid we're just hours from this becoming officially the longest government shutdown ever. The president says he won't give in unless he gets his $5.7 billion for his border wall. And tonight, look at this. Employees across the country now sharing images of their pay stubs. Nothing but zeros on their paychecks. And tonight, just some of the effects here. Miami Airport closing a terminal to consolidate TSA workers, since so many of them have called in sick. They're not getting paid. And tonight, air traffic controllers are now suing the Trump administration for making them work without pay while they keep passenger jets safe in the air. And the FDA stopping routine food safety inspections, no longer looking for E. coli and salmonella, among other things. Tonight, proof once again here, this is not just some political battle in Washington. These are people's lives. And here's Steve Osinsami. After getting blank paychecks today, this was the scene in Boston, a sea of fed up federal workers calling for an end to the shutdown. Lynn Stratton is marching in Utah, blaming everyone in Washington. I have enough for one more mortgage payment, and I got to go to CarMax tomorrow and sell my car. Denise Carver was furloughed from the IRS before Christmas. She's getting her family's groceries tonight at a food pantry. We don't have any money, and we don't have much food, so we're just trying to get by. In Walton, Kentucky, the IRS's Chris Ratchford spent all of his savings on his baby girl, born premature at 26 weeks. No paycheck today, no way for them to make ends meet. I think I cried for the first three days of it because I just, I knew we were already so behind. On Facebook, federal workers are sharing pictures of their empty pay stubs and selling what they can online. Necklaces and earrings set only worn once need money to pay bills because of the government shutdown. Today we met the family of air traffic controller Paul Stearns. He continues to work with no pay, and in his line of work, they don't need this stress. When we're in the tower, we want to be focused on the aircraft and the operation and the safety of the passengers. That's our number one goal. The McCabe's tell a familiar story, how they called the mortgage company asking for help and got none. They said, well, we're really sorry that you're going through this, but you have 30 days to get your payment in full. Um, and after 30 days, we report you to the creditors. Just incredible. Steve Osinsami from Atlanta again tonight. Steve, while the McCabe family was told they're not getting help, the creditors will be alerted in 30 days. We do know tonight that some companies are stepping up and offering breaks. They're trying to at least to help families uh, affected by the shutdown. That's right, David. Bank of America and Wells Fargo, for examples, are modifying loans, and Toyota is offering extensions on payments. All of this is such a reminder of just how many Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. David? Steve Osinsami with us again tonight. Thank you, Steve. It was just last night President Trump said he would, quote, uh, probably almost definitely declare an emergency to go around Congress to build the wall. What is he saying tonight? Mary Bruce up on the Hill. Less than 24 hours after he said he would probably, definitely declare a national emergency to build his wall, today President Trump is saying not so fast. It's the easy way out. I'd rather not do it because this is something that Congress should easily do. But tonight negotiations have completely fallen apart. And many Republicans are warning that declaring a national emergency would set a dangerous precedent. I think that this would be viewed as, as an expansion of executive authority. 
The White House is exploring whether to build the wall using disaster relief money that was intended to help Texas, Florida and Puerto Rico recover from hurricanes. Republicans from those areas are not on board. I'm not for that idea right now, okay? I mean, I'm for getting back to negotiation. But Congress has now left town, and tonight President Trump is sending this message to the 800,000 American workers who aren't getting paid, people he's claimed are on his side. I just really appreciate the fact that uh, they, they have handled it so incredibly well, and many of them agree with what we're doing. All right, so let's get to Mary Bruce live up on the Hill again tonight. Mary, you just reported there Congress has now gone home for the weekend. No further talks planned, just hours now from officially becoming the longest government shutdown ever with no sign it's ending. Well, David, there was a glimmer of compromise here, but the White House threw cold water on it. And now there are no negotiations scheduled. But with lawmakers back home for the weekend, they may begin to feel more pressure as they hear directly from those constituents who are bearing the brunt of this shutdown. David. Mary Bruce with us tonight. Thank you, Mary. Now to the major winter storm tonight as we head into the weekend from Denver all the way clear across to Philly, a passenger jet off the runway. More than 40 million Americans in the path of this. In Missouri, that American Airlines plane sliding off the runway. This was at Columbia Airport. Drivers battling near whiteout conditions for their commute home near St. Louis. The system pushing all the way east to meteorologist Rob Marciano with the latest track for us. He's live tonight along the West Side Highway. Hey, Rob. Hi, David. This system rapidly reorganizing in the plains and along I-70. It's all snow still in Denver and Kansas City and St. Louis. Check it out. And we've got warnings now that stretch through Cincinnati and over through uh, northern parts of Virginia. Uh, tomorrow, tonight, we'll look for the the snow to increase over Missouri, St. Louis, Indianapolis. It's piling up in the morning. And then look for the snows to be stretching out over the mountains into D.C. Baltimore, blocking high, keeping most of it south. But it looks like we'll have a big swath of three to six inches of snow uh, and also up to a foot of snow potentially around St. Louis. Could be their biggest in five years. And although we might not have that much snow here in the northeast, these wind chills will continue to be very cold. David. All right, Rob, we'll be watching you this weekend. Next tonight, the young woman, the rookie police officer who was killed in the line of duty in Davis, California. 22-year-old Natalie Corona just weeks into her job, smiling when she got her badge. Tonight, what she faced in the line of duty. Here's ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas. Tonight, Northern California mourning a painful, unfair loss. Natalie Corona, only 22, shot to death just weeks into her new career as a rookie cop for the Davis Police Department. I've heard her describe our officers tonight as our daughter and our friend and, and just the sister that we all wanted. Officer Corona responding to this three-car accident when she was killed. The gunman fleeing the scene, later killing himself at home. This is just an absolutely devastating loss to the police department. This is Officer Corona in August, full of joy, as her father, a retired police officer himself, pins her badge on her as she's sworn in. On Facebook, she posted this glamorous picture. Dressed in a royal blue gown, she holds a thin blue line flag as a tribute to officers who died in the line of duty. Tonight, she's one of them. David, she had been a volunteer and the police truly considered her family. Her dad served for more than 20 years at a nearby department. Tonight, police in the entire region are devastated. David? Our thoughts are with her family tonight. Pierre Thomas, thank you. The new headline this evening about R. Kelly, the singer now fighting back against chilling allegations in that docuseries about him. And his lawyer tonight fiercely defending his client, saying R. Kelly didn't know he married Aaliyah when she was just 15 because the attorney says she lied about her age. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. Quit hurting people. Quit hurting these girls. For the first time since that bombshell Lifetime documentary alleging controlling and abusive behavior by singer R. Kelly, his lawyer sitting down to take on those accusations. We know those things didn't happen. The man was not operating a uh, harem or a sex cult or holding people hostage or anything like that. Stephen Greenberg also addressed decades-long claims that Kelly is involved with minors. Does he deny ever having a sexual relationship with someone who was under the age of consent. Yes, he absolutely does. Was he married to Aaliyah when she was 15? He was married to her when she was 15. But so then 15 is not of the age of legal consent, right? I mean... Right, except that my understanding is that she did not claim to be 15. And in order to get married, she had to lie about her age. And he is saying that he had no idea? No idea. As for claims by two families that their daughters, 20-year-old Joycelyn Savage and 21-year-old Asriel Cleary, are being held by Kelly against their will, 
they're not being held against their own will. And in fact, I sat down with Jocelyn one-on-one, -on -one, and I talked to her, and I said, look, is this true? Is there some issue? Is